Hey there guys, and welcome back to some more Outpost 2. Uh, we just got through the first novella, and we'll do the first mission. This mission is extremely short because all we're doing is running away. Now, we'll go ahead and look at the mission briefing. So, Commander, something has gone horribly wrong. We must evacuate the colonies immediately. All available evacuation transports have been filled to the capacity and are ready to leave. Our survivability projections have been identi or have identified the vehicles and supplies we need to build a viable new colony. Gather these materials and rendezvous with the mining beacon southeast of our colony. An exact list of needed materials is available in the specific objectives. Hurry, Commander. Time is running out. We look at our objectives. Now, remember what I talked about difficulty beforehand. These would be reduced in uh, easy mode and increased in a hard mode. In fact, in a hard mode, you have to like grab vehicles out of um, the garages before they, before it gets disabled or you're basically screwed. Um, almost all of the stuff is already out in the map uh, and it's, it's a relatively quick process of just grabbing everything and running it away uh, to the correct spot. Um, in fact, I think there's only like two of the kits you actually have to pull out of storage before you actually get to where you're doing. So, we'll just go ahead and start. Oh, before we begin, um, let's go ahead and leave campaign. I'm going to show you something in preferences. If you ever play this game, take show complete objectives off. It makes the objective list substantially easier to read. Instead of things going green and just staying on the list, it just keeps the list there. And as you uh, fall out of objective favor, it will add it back to the list and just remove it. So it's much quicker to go and see like, okay, I still need to do this. I still need to do this instead of having to like sift through sometimes really, really long le uh, lists. Anyway, let's get back into the mission and kick her off. All right, so one of the first things we need to do is get these blank guys. And right there, I first thing I did was uh, left clicked. I believe that vehicle has stuff in it or something in it already. Nope, it does not. So we're gonna want to grab that and bring that here. Neither of those guys have anything in it. They do. Let's get them down there right now. These guys on here. S O S O. Those are the hotkeys for loading something real fast. Same down here, we need to grab up some food. So we're gonna do that before everything starts dying off. Now that we're here, come down here, put the common or smelter in there. Let's start moving the other convex over so that we can grab them before, or that they're just slightly closer to what we need. All right, we got our guys in here now. We can press S-O, S-O. I told you the, the uh, hotkeys are a little wonky, so we do have to get used to that. All right, go ahead and jump up in here and grab the next thing out of storage, which is going to be the structure facility. And we'll get ready to uh, get them down here as well. Um, now, like I said beforehand, if we were on hard, we, there would be things in here we have to get out as well. Now, you notice, like, from the labs that are up in this region, they're just, like, cascading failure around. And eventually, like, as things disable, um, we won't be able to actually use them. So, like, if this gets disabled before you can pull everything out, uh, you're not in a good way. <laughs> like, these guys will start disabling. So you gotta really, especially on hard mode, know what order to do things in. Alright, and that grabs the last of them. Now, I have to have my face up in this corner, uh, which is a shame because you can't see up in this corner. Uh, but the, like the mini-maps over here, our feed is down here, and like everything else is along here. This is an extremely old design for RTSs. In fact, if you jump back around this era, this is a similar design for most uh, things. Like the original Command & Conquer had a design like this where you had drop down over on this side for uh, units and things like that. I, I'm not sure I haven't played a uh, uh, CNC game in a long time, so I'm not sure if they still have this particular setup, but this is... A really unintuitive design. You get used to it. Um, like I wish I could. Where's the lab at? Yeah, like the advanced lab. But it's it's this was infected right off the bat, so I can't even really show off what's going on in there. Um, but as soon as this this is like a little flag. What that really is is a resource point. And if I was to take like say 
my robo surveyor and drop him on it. He would actually survey it and tell me what type of ores in there like this. Um, but that's actually on the map as a flag to tell you get past this point and you're considered safe for the evacuation. So before I finish this, I'm going to show, I'm going to explain a few things. And it's really a shame that the music stops when you pause. But all right. So these are evacuation transports. The only time you will be using these is in the story mode. You need to have enough of them between each story mission or during each mission to uh, accommodate the, the size of your population. Convex are the things that build and repair buildings. You have the structure kit uh, that they grab from the structure facility, and that's where you build the uh, buildings. But these are the guys that actually take those kits around and build the buildings themselves. Um, they don't take none of these take population to create any of these things. These are all robots. The population um, works inside your colony at all times. Uh, you have your robo uh, miner, which once you actually surveyed a point, you you can use them to build a mining point. And the cargo trucks go back and forth, dropping stuff off. It's very rare for you to actually in in any of the game mode to to load up. Uh, cargo trucks like this like extremely rare I, I can't even think of a an instance that you would oh I, I do know of an instance that you would if you're about to lose uh, your main base and you're basically trying to run away to rebuild you'd want to grab as many of your resources as you can before the um, things like the storage facilities get uh, taken down because those will actually just eliminate the resources in them when they get uh, completely disabled so that's something to remember uh, what else do we got here? I think that's it so far. You got your robo surveyor and all that stuff. So it's good to remember that the the transports and or all the, the the vehicles themselves do not like take any population. Those are all the buildings that do. So all right. I hope you guys enjoyed this very first extremely short mission. <laughs> and right here you would see a whole bunch of buildings blowing up. The colony is exploding, and um, what is it? Uh, the vehicles like just barely being in front of all this explosion so each mission gets slightly longer and longer as you built up more and more supplies to successfully get away farther and farther from the blight as it's going now one of the very cool things about this series is that your technology that you research carries over from mission to mission the units you build do not the population you've built up does not so you do have to start from square one with those again every time and building your colony. But the research you do complete carries over. So it behooves you to stay on a map as long as possible with like one load of truck uh, ready to go. Just so you can get in as many researches as you possibly can before leaving. Now this can bite you in the butt as a natural disaster could take out one of your uh, units and then you have to build another one real quick. Uh, at the last second. Um, I, I failed a few missions doing that before in the past. So um, I will admit that I've gone as far as I think mission three or four uh, recently. So that's about as far as my not actual knowledge of the game goes again. Like the tech tree is extremely, extremely unintuitive, but it is so cool because they have like little descriptions of everything. In fact, if you really want to take your time with the game, you set it to level one so you can read and make some like chess like decisions. Uh, level 5 is already pretty slow. Level 10 moves uh, relatively quickly. Um, in fact, playing on level 10 can get your uh, APM up extremely high because of how unintuitive everything is. Uh, can really help you out with that sort of training. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time. Yep. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm going to save the novella for <laughs> in between. Um, but yeah, so I'll see you guys on the next novella and the next mission. <laughs>